Let's go to Legion. As you like always, we got Tim Minchin. Minchin? M Minchin? I, I, hope I, I hope it's Minchin. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I, I happen to check out a different reactor. Uh, checking out the inflatable doll girlfriend song that he did. And I thought it was really great. I think I've seen this guy around like a while back. Um, this is pretty old. None of his stand-up that I've seen is re relatively new. Although I did wiki him. And, you know, he did. He received like a, a, a doctorate in, uh, what is it, word of letters or, or something of letters. He received a, a doctorate in, in Australia in 2013 and another one in 2015. And then 2020 he was given the... Uh, I actually forgot it, but it was some great thing in 2020. So he's still alive. We just don't see him doing music or, or comedy. At least I haven't seen anything recently or on his YouTube channel of, of whatever he's doing. He's also a composer, writer, all that stuff like that. So he's probably doing other things. But with that, let's just get into it. Check it out. See what it's all about. Let's hope the prejudice is good. <laughs> Does anybody else feel like he looks like Shane Dawson? Is or is that just me? This is a song about prejudice and the language of prejudice. I think I picked and the great power song. of the language of prejudice. I think I picked a good time to check this out, Precious. It's called... Prejudice! In our modern, free-spoken society, there is a word that we still hold taboo. A word with a terrible history of being used to abuse, oppress and subdue. Uh, so that gonna be just six seemingly harmless letters arranged in a way that will form a word with more power than the pieces of metal that are forged to make swords. A cup of G's, an R and an E, an I and an N. Wow. Just six little letters all jumbled together. You make something to cause damage that we may never mend. What's he gonna say? And it's important that we all respect that if these people should happen to choose to reclaim the word as their own, it doesn't mean the rest of you have a right to its use. So never <laughs> underestimate. <laughs> Power that language imparts Sticks and stones May break your bones But words can break hearts A couple of G's Cheese, unless you've had to live it An R and an E Even I am careful with it An I and an N In the end it will only offend Don't wanna have to spell it out Again Hey man, that's <laughs> Only a ginger can call another ginger ginger. <laughs> Only a ginger can call another ginger ginger. Oh. So listen to me if you care for your health. You won't call me ginger unless you ginger yourself, yeah. Only a ginger can call another ginger ginger. Ginger life is pretty hard Years of ritual bullying in the schoolyard the Kids call in your anger and fan of pants No invitation to the high school dance But you get up and learn to hold your head up You try to keep your cool and not get head up But until the feeling of ill is truly let up Then the word is ours and ours alone Don't you know that only a ginger Can call another ginger ginger Yep only a ginger can call another ginger ginger. 
So if you call us ginger, we just might come unhinged If you don't have a fringe with at least a tinge of the ginger in it Only <laughs> a ginger can call another ginger ginger Now listen to me when I'm looking for sympathy Just because we're sensitive to UV Just because <laughs> we're pathetically pale We do all right with the females Yeah, I like to ask the ladies round for ginger beer and soon they're running their fingers through my ginger beard And dunking my ginger nuts into their ginger tea yeah. And asking can they call me ginger And I say I don't think that's appropriate Cause only a ginger can call another ginger ginger yeah. And all the ladies they agree it's a fact But once you're gone ginger you can't go back Only a ginger can call another ginger ginger Yeah go ginger go you funky mother. Yeah, you can call us Bozo or Fire Truck. You can even call us Carrot Top or Blood Nut. Yeah, you can call us Matchstick or Tampon. But fucking with the G word is just not on. If you're a ginger phobe and you don't like us, we will stand up to the fight if you want to fight us. But if you cut yourself, you might catch gingivitis. So maybe you should shut your funky mouth. Yeah, only a ginger can call another ginger ginger. Yeah, only a ginger can call another ginger ginger. If you call a ginger, you can't whinge if you're injured If you don't have a tinge of the ginger in your minge Only a ginger <laughs> can call another ginger ginger Yeah, and you know my kids will always be clothed and fed Cause Papa's gonna be bringing home the gingerbread And they'll be pretty smart because they'll be well read And by red I mean red and the other kind of red It's a homophone and only a ginger <laughs> can call another ginger ginger Oh. Only a ginger can call another ginger ginger Just like only a ninja can sneak up on another ninja <laughs> yeah, Only a ginger, only a ginger, only a ginger, yeah Are you listening? I'm not pointing the finger I'm just having a singer, I'm just reminding ya That only a ginger can call another ginger ginger that was, that was like a, an 11 out of 10 right there. Oh, that was great. Oh, that was so freaking good. All right, I guess I'm going down this rabbit hole. I was starting freaking Nick Swartzen, but it, eh, you know, I, I said I was going to keep doing it because it, it, nobody really cares for that kind of comedy right now. Nobody's, you know, nobody wants to watch it. Nobody wants to watch reactions to it. I was enjoying it. I think I'll alternate or, or I'll do this like I want to do a lot of this stuff right here like I, I've always liked this um, kind of stand up I, I actually hope somebody gets to see this and it doesn't get just blocked because um, that would be kind of annoying because I had a thorough a thorough enjoyable time checking this out like I like Bo Burnham but he has only so much um, and a lot of it might be like different different venues same jokes and uh I've seen this guy before. I felt like I saw him like on some other show. Like I don't want to say like Got Talent or something like that, but I felt like I just saw him on some kind of like I don't know what the hell it was. It was something I saw him on. You get that high voice. Something I saw him on. No. Um, oh, dude, that was. It's been a while since I've really enjoyed some comedy stuff. Like I was checking out Doug. What's his face? And he had like the ending of his set was really good. The earlier stuff was was pretty pretty okay, and, and some of it made me laugh. Patrice O'Neill didn't think I was gonna like anything he really said. Elephant in the room, oh my god, I was dying laughing. But to find a good comic and kind of keep the the level of of greatness kind of coming is, is pretty hard. What the hell is on my monitor? Oh, that's 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 fucking picture. I'm an idiot. But um, yeah, like to kind of see like. I've checked out pretty much almost all things Anthony Jeselnik, or I'd be checking him out, right? Like, 
I, I used to watch a show. I, I, I watched a lot of his stand-up, a lot of what people were talking about, is stuff I've already seen before because I was a huge fan. Long before I was ever doing reactions, I was watching comedy, right? Jeff Dunham, uh, Spark of Insanity, probably his best work, right? Uh, Louis Black, uh, 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 Black on Broadway. That's my favorite, I think, special of all time for the most part. Red, White, and Screwed by the same guy, Louis Black. That's really good as well. Old Yeller or whatever, eh. Not the greatest. In God We Trust, not that great. Um, you know, like um, Dane Cook's Vicious Circle, that was pretty good back in the day. It doesn't really hold up. You know, there's there's all kinds of comedians that are just really good and they have a good long, like, I would love for anybody that's checking this out. I don't know if it's going to be seen. I don't know how many people are going to see it. But I will go through the black on Broadway, right? I mean, I might recite everything to myself uh, quietly. But if you've never seen it, and you want something that you think is just going to be really great, I would love to check out that special. If it's on YouTube, if it's accessible, if it's not going to get blocked. I don't care if it gets claimed. You know, everybody that I react to, like comedians and, and professional singers, whatever like that, are more than willing, and I'm not, I don't get mad about it. You, you can always claim, you know, your stuff. Um, it is different, though, like when, when something's six minutes, right, and I'm already going down to 11, you know, Sometimes I check out like a, a Nothing But Thieves song and my, my video is, you know, 16 minutes long. But the song was three minutes. Like it's really weird to claim stuff that way. Like I'm, I'm, I think I'm adding a lot more than what the song just is, but we're breaking it down. But still, if that's kind of like their prerogative, whatever. At the very least, I, I, I react to things just because I like to experience them with the people. Now, I, I don't make any money doing YouTube, so people claiming stuff is just whatever doesn't bother me i guess um it's when, whenever warner bros does it and it's just like really like there's a 30 second clip dude like it's a 20 minute video breaking down you know marvel or something or, or dc actually it's like that's kind of excessive that's crazy but but anyways you know that's just kind of how i feel about it like i, I like i hope this is i'm saying all that because i want this to be uploaded like claim it if you want to claim it and make money off it sure but i I like to experience these kind of incredibly, incredibly funny things with with my community here. Stand up is probably one of my favorite things ever. It's just so good. I like it more than music. I like it more than just epic what whatever's you know like epic uh, movies or, or some crazy scene. Like movies are pretty awesome, but comedy is just there's something about it, man. It's probably one of my top five favorite things just in life. It, it doesn't matter what if I'm if it. I don't mean just like top five favorite things to watch. I mean or listen to. I mean, just out of all the things in the world I could be doing, traveling, doing this, doing that, comedy is one of my favorites. I love it so much. And if you're here, I think you love it too. And so, I mean, I'd love to check out some more Tim, if you guys are willing, if you guys want to check it out, see what it's all about. Maybe there's some stuff that you've seen, but maybe I haven't, and you want to go down that journey with me, I think we'll be doing the Tim journey. I, I think that's just kind of how it's going to be. Um, I'll throw in some Nick Swartz in here and there every week, every other week maybe. Uh, but I really want to make this like a, a thing because it's probably the most fun I've had in a while. And yeah, it's just, uh, I can't, I, I'm just super excited. Like, I'm just excited just thinking about checking the rest of this out and seeing, why, why am I just not on him? Why am I in a black crowd picture? I didn't think I was going to be talking this long. He doesn't have shoes on, by the way. But that's, you know, that's, some people are very eccentric, I guess. Anyways, oh, and, and so, yeah, let, let me... Before I, I went on all the other crap that I was just talking about, talking about claims and stuff, but um, as far as the G-G-E-R-I N-word that he was just kind of referencing, I felt like the first half was definitely, I, of course, right? He's a smart dude. He's a, he's a smart guy, you know, he's a writer, composer, all that stuff. You know, he got doctorates just for his talent. He didn't have to go to school to get his doctorate. He was just that good that gave him one, too. Um... So I definitely think that what he was saying was 100% a meaningful thing about maybe black people. Um, like, right, it's the, it's the double, it's the double meaning to certain things, right? Like, he was talking about uh, the, the N-word, or, or I, did he ever call it the n He never called it the N-word. He called it the, um, he spelled it out, I guess, is what he kind of did. Um and then, you know, he, he, he played on it, right? He, he said, he spelled it out, and he said, Ginger. And, uh, and everybody starts laughing because they know what they expected. 
But I, I definitely believe it was definitely two different meetings on this, you know, same coin, two different sides. And I thought the beginning of the song was something really awesome. Uh, I, I, he did it in a good way, right? Like he wasn't. Like, some people that talk about certain things, social things in the world, get very preachy or whatever. Super clever, uh, super engaging, super just kind of provocative to make you think. You know, he was talking about black people and them taking the word back doesn't mean that you have the right to say. Which is anybody that's you know, I, I find it funny. I've had friends that are different styles of I'm not being offensive please let's not get the PC culture in, in my channel because I can tell you I don't care uh, I have friends that are different shades of brown and what I mean is I had a friend I have a, a friend that that's Hispanic uh, he's Mexican he lives in Chicago says the word like crazy because he just thinks he can't right there's a girl I know that's you know uh, well some people from my work actually may see this so, there, there's somebody I work with that's not white that also said, like doesn't feel it's crazy to say it, right? It's like, uh, okay, you know, just because you you know you're not white but you're not black, you you don't really have the uh, just what because you're a shade of brown you get you think you can say it, like it, it, hey if black people want to give other people the, the their uh, what, what did um. What was it like Jay Z and all them were talking about like the end card, right? Some of some of the like black communities were talking about like he gets the end card. Like if they want to do that for for Mexican people or whoever else, then that's just not me. But in general, I'm like if you think you just have the right to say stuff like that because you're not white, that's crazy. It's people, it's black people that live in this country specifically that are taking that word back. And it, there's like another person that's like. You know, oh, it's just my generation, but they're white. It's like, no, dude, no, you just don't say that. It's not a generational thing. It's not funny and cute, right? You're, you're white, and, and you know they're they're younger, but they're like, ah, oh, just like saying it with the a, you know, because that's just kind of like a TikTok or something said it. I don't fucking know where that came from, but it, <laughs> it's like, oh, this generation's fucking screwed, and so, and it's not a harmful thing either. None of it's harmful. It's just they kind of view themselves in some form of that culture. And I like he, like how he said, it's like, I thought of all that when he said, just because they're taking the word back doesn't mean that you get to take it back with them, right? You're not on that. I was going to say you're not on the, on, the, on the boat, but that would have been a little insensitive. Um, the train, right? It, it, what Chinese people did, the train tracks. Yes, we can say we're not on the same train. Um, see, you know, all that kind of racial double entendre jokes, I, I've missed that. I've missed those things and saying, you know, I miss kind of like just uh, Bill Burr is kind of the only one kind of trucking through right now and saying whatever the hell he wants and telling anybody else that doesn't like to go fuck themselves because you're just, you're the problem, not him. And this is a little older, but I like at this time, this would have been like a clever joke, but to, we're listening to it now. I, I really like I, the joke resonates so much more now to me. Right, he flipped it up to Ginger, and that was hilarious. And he went into the whole thing about, you know, redheaded people, and, and his response when he said tampon, and the crowd went like, "Oh!" And he was just like, "Like that was great. That was pretty hilarious." Um, yeah, <laughs> I try not to bring. I don't, I don't really talk about my work, people, but sp specifically two people just really had a huge kind of plot in this whole story. So. I don't usually bring up people from my work in anything that I do, uh, but you know you meet people. I, I, you met people in high school too that that said stuff out of ignorance or hatred. So that's even a darker note, and that's even crazier. But <laughs> we're almost at 19 minutes for a six-minute stand-up clip. Hey man, I had a lot to talk about. I had a lot to say. I enjoyed this immensely. Sorry for talking so long, but if you stayed at the very end, you know, I mean, if you've been here a while, you know what you can do. You can throw that high five right right here. In the comments down below saying whatever you're saying high five what's going on say hi back uh, it's just kind of like the we stay to the end kind of thing and uh, I appreciate that but I'm gonna stop rambling thanks for watching thanks for hanging out like the video like the content because like subscribe and share remember it's completely up to you I do appreciate it, though it does help me on some way or another my voice is or my mouth is completely dry and I'll see you on every video I'm doing next once again my name is Azrael